actually believes they exist. Truth drugs? Yes. And don't they? Of course not. The important thing is that he... he wants a way to speak, to finally tell me what happened in those stables. The tape is too isolated, and hypnosis, he pretends, is a trick, so he can deny it later. I'm tempted to play a real trick on him. Like what? Give him an aspirin. Tell him it's the strongest truth drug in the world. He'd just deny everything again afterwards. The same thing all over. No, because I tell him the truth afterwards. That it was simply an aspirin. And he'd believe me. You know, underneath all that glowering, the boy trusts me. Realise that? Oh, I'm sure he does. Poor bloody fool. Oh, now, please, Martin, dear, don't start that again. Can you think of anything worse one can do to somebody than to take away their worship? Worship? Yes, that word again. Isn't that a little extreme? Extremity is the point. Worship isn't destructive, Martin. I know that. I don't. I only know it's the core of his life. What else has he got? I mean, think about it. He can hardly read. Knows no physics or engineering to make the world real to him. No paintings to show him how others have enjoyed it. No music except television jingles. No history except tales from a desperate mother. No friends, not one kid to give him a joke and make him know himself more moderately. He's a modern citizen for whom society doesn't exist. He lives one hour every three weeks, howling in a mist. With my body, I thee worship. Many men have less vital with their wives. All the same. They don't usually blind their wives, do they? Oh, come on. Well, do they? You mean he's a madman? A violent, dangerous madman will go around the country doing it again and again? I mean he's in pain, Martin. He's been in pain for most of his life. Yes. And you can take it away. Yes. Then that's all you need to know in the end. No. Why not? Because... It is his. His? His pain. His own. He made it. I don't understand. Well, I don't. I mean, there's nothing meritorious about being in pain. That's just pure old masochism. I'm talking about passion, Hester. Do you know what that word meant originally? Suffering. The way you get your own spirit through your own suffering. Self-chosen, self-made. This boy's done that. He's created his own desperate ceremony just, just, to, just to ignite one flame of original ecstasy in, in the spiritless waste around him. All right. He's destroyed for it. Horribly. He's virtually been destroyed by it. But one thing I know for sure, that boy has known a, a passion more ferocious than I have known in any second of my life. Well, let me tell you something. I envy it. You can't. Don't you see? That's what his stare has been saying to me all this time. At least I galloped. When did you? I'm jealous, Hester. Jealous. Of Alan Strang. Well, that's absurd. Is it? Yes, utterly. Utterly. I go on about my wife. You thought about the husband, the finicky, critical husband with his art books on mythical Greece. What worship has he ever known? Real worship. Without worship, you, you shrink. It's as brutal as that. I shrank my own life. No one can do it for you. I settled for being pallid and provincial out of my own eternal timidity. The old, the old story of bluster and do bugger all. I didn't even dare to have children. Didn't dare to bring children into a house and marriage as cold as mine. I tell everyone... Margaret's the Puritan. I'm the pagan. Some pagan. Such wild returns I make to the womb of civilization. Three weeks a year in the Mediterranean. Every bed booked in advance, every meal paid for with vouchers, cautious jaunts in hired cars, suitcase crammed with kaopectate. What a fantastic surrender to the primitive. And the primitive. I use that word endlessly. Ah, the primitive world, I say. What instinctual truths were lost with it. And while I sit there baiting that poor unimaginative woman with the word 
That freaky boy is trying to conjure the reality. I look at pages of centaurs trampling the soil of Argos, and outside my window that boy is trying to become one in a Hampshire field. I sit there night after night watching that woman knitting, a woman I haven't kissed in six years. And he stands for an hour in the dark, sucking the sweat off his god's hairy cheek. Then in the morning, I put away my books on the cultural shelf, close up my Kodachrome snaps of Mount Olympus, touch my reproduction statue of Dionysus for luck, and go off to the hospital to treat him for insanity. Now, do you see?